Hello, good evening and welcome. I'm Karima Brown and you're watching Political Exchange where we unpack Africa's political economy. Reshaping South Africa's ITC sector is a key priority, especially within the broader infrastructure rollout plan by the government, which is the bedrock of its economic strategy to fast track growth. The sector, which has not had a policy overhaul since 1995, has also been in a slump and a malaise of sorts and needs a bit of a kickstart. To tell us just how this will be done is South Africa's Communications Minister, Dina Pule, who now joins me in the studio. Minister, thank you for your time. In your budget vote speech, you mm -hmm. said that um, South Africa's ICT sector needs to um, be in tandem with South Africa's developmental objectives. Exactly. How exactly are you planning to do this? Look, um, let me start by saying that, Karima, thank you very much and good evening. Um, the first thing is that um, we in the, in the sector have had um, the first and the last paper, white paper, in, in the early 1990s, I think it's 1996. And from then until now, it's 2012, a lot has happened in the ICT sector. And, and therefore it needed that um, we, we revisit that, um, that white paper or revisit the policy um, around which we, we, we operate as a sector, both as a government and um, the sector outside, which is a private sector. And we then had to look at the um, Electronic um, um, Act, and we also have to look at um, the ICASA Act. As you would know that they are the um, regulator of the industry. And, and what we did then, early in the year, this year, around um, April, uh, we then had um, a workshop and that workshop, which was a what called a colloquium, um, we invited every stakeholder in the sector. We we were there as a department. We brought all our stake-owned uh, companies that are reporting to the department, uh, including ICASA, and we then brought all the other um, you know stakeholders who are um, uh, operating within the, the industry, you know, the mobile operators, the fixed operators and all of them. So it, they can come in and make input on how they want to shape the policy of the country going forward. And I must say that uh, it was quite a, a good um, uh, workshop. People made inputs there. We had about um, six uh, commissions and others looked at how we can then grow the economy of the country, others looked at uh, job creation, others looked at investment, others looked at uh, regulations. Although we are the department and as a government we need to take a lead in, um, in, 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 in a, a reviewing policy, but we thought that it was important that we bring everybody who is a stakeholder, mm -hmm. so that whatever we, we we decide on eventually, everybody says we have been part of it. Now you of course have said uh, when mm -hmm. you answered the question that things have changed um, since you know we last looked at policy. Yes. Telecommunications is of course rapidly changing, new mm -hmm. inventions all the time. Exactly. Now you are meant to present the review only to cabinet in 2013, mm -hmm. but there seems to be impatience from the industry in an article in the financial mail mm -hmm. um, uh, one of the big players um, from Lauren Braith with uh, Kabosha the executive director of the South African communications forum said that South Africa's ICT competitiveness have been slipping mm -hmm. uh, in comparison comparison with other countries on the continent and we need to dramatically increase a greater internet access and affordability for our citizens isn't 2013 a bit late, Minister? Shouldn't there be greater haste? Yeah, I think um, Lauren is right, but I must also say that she participated in the in the workshop in April, and she's one of the stakeholders that I'm talking about because they operate in the sector. I, I think that um, she's also right when she says that we have to increase um, the internet access. We are doing our best. What I should explain to you, Karima, and, and the public is that as we review um, the policies, work doesn't stop happening. We are doing work on the side. And as, um, as, as um, I may make an example, when, when you want to increase um, you know, internet access, what you need to do is to start rolling out broadband all over the country. And how do you do that? As we sit here, me and you, we know that the private sector is doing that already. We are also doing that um, um, in, in the process. However, we want to handle it in a manner that is coordinated. So since that um, workshop, I must say that we now sit here as a, as a department with um, a broadband strategy, a draft, that we are going to take to cabinet, not in 2013, but this year. Um, why we are saying 
uh, probably every process is going to end in 2013. Not that we're only going to take the review to cabinet in 2013. So it's that's a, the conclusion. It's a conclusion of it. It's a mm -hmm. process because once we started in April, what it meant is that we then had to go back behind the scenes and do those things that we said we we're going to do. One is that we now have a draft um, a strategy on broadband. The second thing that we have to do, what that we have to work together with the um, with the stakeholders, is the broadband plan because the country doesn't have a broadband. plan. Plan. You know, there's work that is happening in municipalities and provinces, and therefore as a department we have to make sure that we come up with a plan. So the strategy is going to help us to come up with a plan. Once we have a plan, we will then um, implement all of us in the in the country. And I must say that um, just this week, um, we ended yesterday, we had a cabinet lochotla. In the cabinet lochotla, um, we agreed that the department will then work with other ministers. The minister of... Um, 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 DPE, which is um, a public enterprises, Minister Gigaba, we're also going to work with Minister of Science and Technology because we also want to go into innovation. As you would know that um, um, we, we have less innovations that are happening that we're exporting to other countries. Most of the time, you know, we consume. So um, there's a team now that is working together with me that, uh, in cabinet so that we can, you know, push the work that we're doing and then we can take it back to cabinet. However, also you must understand Karima and the public must understand this. When you review policy, what you do, you then have to go out to the public and say, this is a draft of what we think must happen. And then they must make comments. Once they have finished with their comments, we must take the comments, um, the document with all the comments that the, the public has made to parliament. And parliament will also take that process back to the public and the public are going to uh, the public is also going to comment and when they finish it is only then that it can be adopted as a a document that is well researched and well you know a, in, a, in, input made by, by by the public so that's why we are saying it will only be happening in 2013 because we're looking at the processes that are supposed to be happening before we finally say this is our policy document now during your budget vote speech you also made very little mention regarding the state's 39% holding in Telcom oh, or yeah. how it plans to allocate, you know, the highly sought after radio spectrum that allows for high speed internet access. And afterwards in the business day, you were quoted as saying that um, Telcom doesn't need foreign direct investment. And that was um, after there was speculation that the Korean deal had fallen through. Mm -hmm. Minister, why would you say that Telcom doesn't need foreign direct investment? What did you mean? Were you accurately quoted? How exactly do we bring foreign players to the market when you when you make a statement like that look um, I, I was not quoted uh, properly because you know we are a mixed economy in South Africa of course we we work uh, um, um, with private sector and that is why I was saying to you earlier on when we review policy we brought in private sector so there's no way that we can't um, expect that or we wouldn't need uh, foreign direct uh, investment all um, I, I, I should say to you Karima is that when the, the, the KT and, and Telecom deal was happening, and we took that uh, proposal to Cabinet, and Cabinet said no to it. And Cabinet gave me and the other ministers to say, go and work out a strategy that you can come back and present to us as Cabinet uh, to look at, um, at how we can assist um, uh, Telecom. Now, the one thing that you should understand is that Telecom needs a turnaround strategy. Um, and a turnaround strategy is not something that you can wake up the following morning and think that you, uh, you have worked on it. We have now done a lot of work. We have gone out to research to go and benchmark with other countries and check what other countries are doing with their uh, state-owned entities. But in particular, my, underst your, my understanding, and, and I think that your understanding would be that Telcom is a very strategic um, uh, organization for us as government, but also for the country. Telcom, before all the other, you know, um, private entities and the other fixed line, you know, companies came in, was the only company that was able to roll out uh, infrastructure. And we think as a country, as we sit here, including those that are, are outside the country, have been saying to us, when we ask them questions, why do you want to invest in, in, in Telcom? They say Telcom... And I'm quoting them here. They say Telcom has the best infrastructure that we've ever seen in the world. And they even say even the, the, the most expensive infrastructure. So as a country, I don't think that we want to sell that out. We want to keep it because it will then help us. It will go back to the question that you asked me earlier on about, you know, um, Internet access. So if we, if we don't keep Telcom and assist Telcom, 
to roll out the broadband and the infrastructure in the country, then it means we're not going to help the, the people of South Africa, especially the rural areas. Because Karima business, it's about the profits that they get. If I were to say to the private sector, can you go and roll out um, in the rural areas of the Eastern Cape, they will ask me a question. Where's the market? Where's the market? Who is going to uptake that, um, that infrastructure? So we therefore have as a government to invest in the, in the infrastructure. And the only way to invest is to use our own entities, to invest through them and make sure that there is access for internet all over. We, as a, as a government, have to go and take the risk uh, in those areas for, for private sector to go in. For an example, we have police stations everywhere. We have post offices everywhere. We have schools everywhere as government. So if we invest and we roll out um, a broadband in all these areas, what it means is that our schools are going to be connected. Our um, police stations are going to be connected. We're going to have e-filing in the police stations. Nobody will say a file is lost. You know, in schools, our kids are going to access, um, you know, internet. Our hospitals, you know, the same way with files, we're going to have e-filing. And even more than that, you know, um, where if you sit here in Johannesburg and, and somebody is sitting here uh, in KZN and, and, and the person who's sitting in KZN in a clinic is just a nurse and you sit here in Johannesburg, you're a doctor, you can then connect with that person in, in the rural area. So that's what we want to do with telecom. But Minister, we've been wanting to do that for a very, very long time. Yeah. Why are we not doing it? What are the impediments? Why is everything taking so long? Especially in a sector where innovation mm. literally overtakes us. Yeah. You can be busy making policy now, yeah. and the policy that you present, technology would have outstripped what you're putting on, on the table. How are you going to keep up with what happens in the sector um, and get policy to, to speak to the realities of what is actually out there? Yeah, I think um, that's why we have started this process, Karima. You know, April is now September, and I can tell you that um, we are going to go back to Cabinet now and make a presentation. We, as I was saying earlier on, we have gone out to look at what can, can work best for telecom. And by the time we come back here to you, Karima, and come and present... Let, let, me, let me ask you, Minister, yeah. quickly, give us a sneak preview. What are the th What is the thinking with telecom? You said earlier we want to keep telecom. Does that mean that the state... Um, does not see a role for the private sector in telecom? No, we do. We do see a, ro a role for private sector in telecom. I can't lose that. All I'm saying is that we want to keep our stake there in telecom as a government so that we can then also be able to redirect, you know, that, that institution to be able to help us to roll out broadband or the infrastructure. But what I'm saying is that the unfortunate part, Karima, is that uh, I can't then present it to you here before I present to my colleagues at Cabinet, otherwise they will... What is oh, the timeline geez. for um, that presentation? The, the, the timeline is, um, is, um, is three months and this is the last month that we have. And I can tell you in, um, in, the, in the middle of September we'll, we'll be back in Cabinet to go and make a presentation. We are ready with it, it's just that I can't I can't share it with you now. I have to share it with the leadership of the country. They must approve because I'm, I'm part of a collective. And once we do that, then we'll come back. And I, I promise you, I can come back and sit with you, Karima, and discuss. Minister, the, the one of the issues that you were also saying that you're not happy with is, is our penetration levels yeah. um, and, and also the issue of affordability. Mm -hmm. um, why is it that we, we are lagging behind other African countries? We see, um, you know, a mobile tele uh, telephony taking off in places like Kenya, mm -hmm. South Africa is the strongest economy on the continent. Why are we lagging behind? I, I, I want to believe that uh, the challenge may have been in regulations. But we also want to caution and, and we don't want to over-regulate the industry because then it's not helpful. But on the other hand, we do discuss with the, with the um, um, mobile operators in the country or everybody else who's a stakeholder who's operating in the sector. We, we continuously discuss with them. I'm sure you would have seen that some of them have gone down now, and I don't want to mention them because otherwise the others are going to say, Minister, you went to advertise others. But I think um, because you're a South African and you have seen that some of them are going down, and I think all of them were agreeing that for us to be able to make sure that all South Africans access, you know, um, uh, the technologies, um, whether it is um, it is the broadband, whether it is internet, um, and we we agree on that one. All we have not agreed upon is um, how much and how fast they should be doing that. And now we have engaged ICASA to say, ICASA, can we then do what you are supposed to be doing? You have to regulate, and we are waiting for for ICASA to help us to do that. Minister, we have to take a short break, but when we come back, we continue our conversation with South Africa's Communications Minister Dina Pule.